Hello everyone. Today we are going to see a problem based on influence line diagrams. Let us read the question one time. A train of four concentrated loads moves from left to right on a simply supported girder of span 16 meter. Make influence line diagram for absolute maximum positive shear force, absolute maximum negative shear force and absolute maximum bending moment. Also calculate the values. In the question, the length of the beam is given 16 meter. Four moving loads are given. These loads are moving from left to right. The 50 kN and 10 kN point loads are spaced at 2 meter. The 30 kN and 50 kN point loads are spaced at 2 meter. The 40 kN and 30 kN point loads are spaced at 3 meter. In this question, we have to calculate the absolute maximum positive shear force, the absolute maximum negative shear force, and the absolute maximum bending moment. First, let us calculate the absolute maximum positive shear force. For calculating the absolute maximum positive shear force, we have to keep the ordinate as 1 in the left side of the beam. Let us see how this 1 comes. We know that the ordinate for maximum positive shear force is equal to L minus X by L. Here the maximum ordinate is kept in the point A. When we apply X is equal to 0 here, L by L we will get 1. For calculating the maximum absolute positive shear force, we have to keep all of these loads on the left side. Because on the left side, the ordinate is maximum. You can see that I have kept all of the loads on the left side. But sometimes, when we move one or two loads on the left of the beam, the absolute positive shear force may increase. First, let us try with the 40 kN point load. So let us move the 40 kN point load on the left side. Now this 40 kN point load is in the point A. But when we move this load on the left of A, the 30 kN point load will come in the point A. You can see that I have moved 40 kN point load on the left of A. Now 30 kN point load is in the point A. Now let us calculate the shear increase. The formula is WD by L minus W1. W1 is the load which we have moved. We have moved the 40 kN point load on the left. So for W1 we have to apply 40. D is the distance in which we have moved the load. We have moved the 40 kN load at the distance of 3 meter. So for D we have to apply 3. W is the total load. Before moving the 40 kN on the left, we had 4 loads in the beam. We have to add these 4 loads. 40 plus 30 plus 50 plus 10. We will get 130. The length of the beam is equal to 16 meter. We can apply that. Finally, we are getting a negative value. We are getting a negative value. That means when we move this 40 kN on the left of A, the absolute positive shear force decreases. So we should not keep the 40 kN point load on the left of A. We should keep it in the point A. You can see that I have kept the 40 kN point load in the point A. Now let us calculate the ordinates for the other loads. For 16 meter it is 1 but I want for 13 meter. So 1 by 16 into 13, I will get 0 0.8125. For 16 meter, it is 1, but I want for 11 meter. I am getting 0 0.6875. For 16 meter, it is 1, but I want for 9 meter. I am getting 0 0.5625. Now let us calculate the absolute maximum positive shear force. We have to multiply these ordinates with the loads. Then we have to add them. Finally, we are getting 104.375 kN. 
Now let us calculate the absolute maximum negative shear force. For that we have to keep the maximum ordinate as 1 in the right side of the beam. Let us see how this 1 comes. We know that the ordinate for maximum negative shear force is equal to x by L. Here x is equal to L. So we can cut L and L. Finally we will get 1. For calculating the absolute maximum negative shear force, we have to keep these loads on the right of the beam because on the right of the beam, we are having the maximum ordinate. You can see that I have kept all of the loads on the right of the beam. But in some cases, if we are moving one or two loads on the right of B, the absolute maximum negative shear force may increase. First, let us try with this 10 kN point load. So, we are going to move this load on the right of B. Now, 10 kN load is in the point B. But when we move 10 kN on the right of B, the 50 kN will come in the point B. You can see that I have moved 10 kN on the right of B. Now, 50 kN is in the point B. Now, let us calculate the shear increase. W1 is the load which we have moved. We have moved 10 kN on the right of B. So for W1 we have to apply 10. D is the distance in which we have moved the load. We have moved the load at the distance of 2 meter. So for D we have to apply 2. W is the total load. Before moving the 10 kN on the right of B, we had 4 loads in the beam. So we have to add these 4 loads, 40 plus 30 plus 50 plus 10, we will get 130. The length of the beam is equal to 16 meter, we can apply that. We are getting a positive value, that means when we move 10 kN on the right of B, the absolute negative shear force increases. Now let us try with the 50 kN point load. When we move 50 kN on the right of B, the 30 kN will come in the point B. You can see that I have moved 50 kN on the right of B. Now let us calculate the shear increase. W2 is the load which we have moved. We have moved 50 kN on the right of B. So we have to apply 50. D is the distance in which we have moved the load. We have moved 50 kN at the distance of 2 meter from the point B. So we have to apply 2. W is the total load before moving the 50 kN on the right of B. We had 3 loads in the beam. So we have to add these 3 loads. We should not consider 10 kN because it is not acting in the beam. So 40 plus 30 plus 50. We will get 120. Finally, we are getting a negative value. That means when we move 50 kN on the right of B, the absolute maximum negative shear force decreases. So, we should not keep the 50 kN point load on the right of B, but we should keep 50 kN in the point B. You can see that I have kept the 50 kN point load in the point B. Now let us calculate the ordinates for the 40 kN and 30 kN. For 16 meter it is 1, but I want for 14 meter. I am getting 0 0.875. For 16 meter it is 1, but I want for 11 meter. I am getting 0 0.6875. Now we can calculate the absolute maximum negative shear force. For that, we have to multiply these three loads with the ordinates. Then we have to add them. Finally, we are getting 103.75 kN. Now, let us calculate the absolute maximum bending moment. For that, we have to find the location of the resultant R. Let us take moment about the 40 kN point load. Let us keep clockwise positive and anticlockwise negative. All of the three loads will be acting in the clockwise direction towards the 40 kN point load. 
For the 10 kN point load, the total distance is 7 meter, so 10 into 7. For the 50 kN point load, the total distance is 5 meter, so 50 into 5. For the 30 kN point load, the distance is 3 meter, so 30 into 3. The resultant is acting towards the point in the anticlockwise direction, so it will be negative, and the distance is x bar, so minus r into x bar. Finally, we are getting x bar 3.15 meter. The maximum absolute bending moment occurs under the load which is nearer to the resultant. You can see that the 30 kN point load is nearer to the resultant. Let us calculate the distance between 30 kN and the resultant. 3.15 minus 3, we will get this distance which is equal to 0.15 meter but we need the center of 0.15 meter so 0.15 by 2 we are getting center of 0.15 meter so this is the point we have to keep in the center of the beam so 30 kN should be kept at 0.075 meter at the left of the center of the beam we know the formula for the ordinate for the maximum bending moment x into l minus x by l we have to keep this ordinate under the 30 kN point load. On the left of 30 kN, we are having 7.925 meter. On the right of 30 kN, we are having 8.075 meter. So x is equal to 7.925. L minus x is equal to 8.075. We can apply the values in the formula. Finally, we are getting 4. Now, let us calculate other ordinates. For 7.925, it is 4, but I want for 4.925, I am getting 2.49. For 8.075, it is 4, but I want for 6.075, I am getting 3.01. In the same way, we have to calculate the ordinate under 10 kN. Now, let us calculate the absolute maximum bending moment. For that, we have to multiply the loads with the ordinates and then we have to add them. Finally, we are getting 390.3 kN meter. Now, we are going to end this session. Thank you for watching this video.